Figuring out how to tune a PID controller in a process control class is arguably at the heart of process control. It is the point at which we are now deciding how to tune our parameters to get the best performance and robustness from our controller. And so the two key words here are performance, which tells us how rapid and smooth uh, we uh, are able to respond to perturbations such as step changes. And robustness. And robustness tells us how able, how capable our controller is of handling inaccuracies. And so if our model isn't perfect, which no model is, uh, do we have a controller that is robust enough to be able to handle that? And then another thing to account for is as time evolves, perhaps your model is changing over time as well and we can't call it a necessarily static system. And so what we'll find in process control class is that performance and robustness are things that we uh, have to choose between. You can't have both, but you can um, find a balance that is best for you. So if we design a process to have the best possible performance, we do so at the cost of robustness. If there are any inaccuracies in our model, we are putting ourselves in serious jeopardy um, with our controller design. And so uh, the first thing um, we'll do is we'll consider the uh, a classic closed loop transfer function model in which we have some demanded uh, set point uh, value and uh, we'll have some measured value entering an air block and we will have some kind of controller analyzing the air passing it on to a valve for instance then on to the actual process itself and then out of the process, we have some kind of measuring block or uh, some kind of transmitter. And uh, each one of these has its own dynamics. And so uh, commonly what we'll do uh, for the sake of simplicity is we will lump these blocks into one block and it, we'll call it GP um, just so that we can incorporate if we had a bunch of time delays, for instance, all into one nice transfer function block. And so typically the models we'll work with are a little bit simpler and they'll just be uh, your controller feeding into your process and then um, you'll have feedback. And so you don't need to worry as much about um, all of this other stuff. And so if we write down the transfer function, the closed loop transfer function um, of this uh, block diagram that I've just drawn, we would find that the output over the in, um, over the set point is equivalent to the product of all the blocks or the product of the two blocks between the output and the set point divided by the characteristic equation, which is one plus the product of every block present in our function or um, our control block. And so this is our transfer function that uh, we're going to be working with in our uh, PID controller design um, mechanisms and optimizations. And so the, the thing that we're going to be considering when we're analyzing these kinds of closed loop transfer functions in this case would be this quantity on the left y over ysp. And so uh, what we'll have is we'll define a term y over ysp d sub d and that denotes that it's the desired um, response of our system and so um, in a perfect world uh, we can start out by asking ourselves what is the range that we can expect for this kind of performance value and if we let this thing equal one uh, we need to ask and go back to our physical intuition if we have a y over ysp uh, sub D value equivalent to one, that means that we have no uh, offset in our, um, it means that our uh, process will respond instantaneously to set point changes. And in the case of this, we would have no error 
present because we have instant uh, response. And I apologize for the poor English, but you get the idea. If we have no air present, there will be nothing to feed into our, uh, there, there'll be no reason to have a controller in the first place. And so this notion of having a performance value, y over YSPD, uh, equivalent to one is impossible. It is physically impossible. And so if we wanted to be more realistic in what kind of performance uh, we could expect, what we will now do is redefine y over YSPD as this. So we would have 1 divided by tau CS plus 1. And so the first thing to note with this is that we have a gain. Uh, our controller gain is equivalent to 1, which means that we have offset free tracking uh, once we reach our new steady state value. And then uh, the other key takeaway here is that uh, looking at our denominator, we said this is a first order system or transfer function, which means that we are not going to uh, realize any oscillations. And having no oscillations is a good thing in practice because um, the less op uh, oscillations we have, um, the more smooth our function will respond to inputs. And so this equation here is the realistic uh, desired uh, response that we can uh, aim for when we are designing PID controllers. And so what we'll do next is if we plug in uh, and substitute all of these uh, terms uh, into this equation, we want to solve for GC because GC is what we're actually designing here. What we would see is that we'd have a, a term one over GP and this tilde denotes that it is the model GP, so there can be inaccuracies present. And that is equivalent to the quantity y over ysp sub d divided by 1 minus y over ysp sub d. And uh, this is uh, just some algebra that's going on in the background. And so the next thing that we will do is um, also plug in the actual value um, of y over ysp_d, which is 1 over quantity tau cs plus 1, as well as we're going to let gp tilde be equal to kp divided by tau ps plus 1. And so the thing you'll note here is that this is, we're assuming that we have a first order uh, process. And so that's not always the case, but uh, for the sake of this example, that's what we're going with. And so if we do the algebra and again solve for gp, what we will see is that gc is equal to tau p times s plus 1 divided by kp, the gain of our uh, process, and then this is times 1 over quantity tau c s plus 1 divided by 1 minus 1 over quantity tau c s plus 1, and this term is also equal to tau p s plus 1 divided by kp times the quantity 1 over tau cs. And so at this point, um, it is uh, a, a good stopping point to look at this uh, transfer function that we arrived at via the direct sub, um, synthesis method of designing our PID controller and look at a generic PI controller transfer function. And uh, what that tells us is that in a generic TI controller, we would have a transfer function of the form GC is equal to KC plus KC over tau I S, which is equal to uh, tau I S plus one times kc 
divided by tau i s. And so what we will note here is the similarity between um, these two transfer functions, tau i s plus one uh, would be equivalent to tau p s plus one. And then, um, so what we can do is um, via the direct synthesis model, we can now say that if we wanted to know what the gain of our controller should be for a first order process, it will be equivalent to tau p divided by kp times tau c. And tau c will be equal to tau i. And so this is a very important uh, result to get to via the direct synthesis model because what we see is that our controller parameters are functions, they are explicitly defined in terms of our model parameters. And uh, this is a big step forward in terms of uh, previous uh, PID uh, uh, design methods that were used in the early 40s. Um, those relied on uh, much more empiric results that uh, had very dangerous methodologies uh, behind actually solving for these things. Um, but uh, this is the key takeaway that we get from the direct synthesis model. And then uh, a final thing to note here is that with our uh, controller uh, transfer function that we have obtained via the uh, direct synthesis model, we see this 1 over s behavior, this integrating behavior, and this is a consequence um, of letting kc equal, zero, uh, equal 1. And so because we let kc equal 1, we have offset free tracking. And offset free tracking is a good thing because we want our output to eventually reach and stay at our uh, demanded uh, set point value. And so this wraps up um, a basic overview of the direct synthesis uh, model for designing PID controllers. And I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.